Some people say that Rome was not built in one day, but probably StarLab can be put in orbit from one day to one another. Today we talk about StarLab. Welcome back. Here we talk about space and everything related to it. If you are passionate about space, astronomy, technology and everything about it, you can join all our social platform at the Space Info Club or our website at www.spaceinfo.club where tons of content and a community of experts are there waiting for you. This is the Space Info Club. Welcome back on the Space Info Club. Today, in this new video, we talk about StarLab, a joint venture between Airbus Space and Voyager Space. Yes, this is it. The news is that the joint venture is not a, a news of today, it's, a, it's a, from some time ago, but uh, let's talk about, uh, uh, about the history, how it started. Well, it started in 2021 uh, between Voyager Space and Lockheed Martin and with Norton Grumman, which was, uh, I would say, orbiting around the project uh, since some time. But uh, uh, then, one year after, in 2022, uh, Lockheed Martin uh, got out from, uh, from the project and uh, Airbus Space, the European counterpart of the, of the project, I would say, uh, uh, just caught the, the chance to get in and uh, from 2022 now we have Airbus Space involved in the project and uh, uh, it is the, the, the news of some days ago that uh, probably next year we could see already uh, this amazing uh, space station in orbit and what is uh, very special about this is that you can think about the International Space Station which was built in something like, I would say, 20 years because uh, uh, the very first modules were built thanks to the space shuttle uh, with multiple launches, multiple missions with people and astronauts putting uh, uh, the various modules into orbit and uh, still uh, some uh, very few modules kept being built and added in over, over the years and uh, today is, uh, um, is uh, the 25th of May 2024 and uh, the space station is probably uh, the fi uh, finally completed. I would say that no uh, further models are uh, foreseen to be added, but uh, in a few years, uh, something like 2030, it will be decommissioned. So uh, as we have started thinking about uh, uh, commercial launches, commercial astronauts, commercial space project, uh, also commercial space station uh, have started to, to come into our mind. And today we talk about Starlab, as I, as I said. So. Uh, why it is so special? Uh, well, one of the most important thing is that it can be launched in, a, in a, a one single launch. And yes, I am talking about the biggest uh, rocket we have uh, today at, at our disposal today, uh, almost. Indeed, uh, I'm talking about uh, uh, SpaceX Starship. And uh, thanks to its huge, uh, I would say, uh, free space, dedicated to payload, uh, StarLab is the, of, uh, of the perfect dimensions uh, just to get uh, fitted into that huge space, into that cargo space and it is indeed, uh, it has a diameter of 8 meters um, and uh, uh, the overall, I would say, volume is uh, something like 340 cubic meters to, to give you a, a an idea uh, the International Space Station overall has something like 950 almost 1000 cubic meters so with one launch one single launch you can put into orbit a spacecraft which will be a, a space station of almost one third the volume the, uh, the useful mo uh, volume of the International Space Station this is amazing this is huge and uh, yes, what, what you are seeing in the video, if you are watching us on YouTube, and by the way, subscribe if you haven't yet, it's just very useful for us to keep growing and keep producing content, so thank you. Also, thank you for watching the, the video. Uh, what you are looking now is the uh, final concept of the project of StarLab. As you can see, uh, there are uh, solar panels as a primary energy uh, supply. Uh, but what about uh, uh, the energy supply of the humans on board? Well, uh, we have to think about uh, uh, an, an internal space occupied by four astronauts in nominal condition. And that's four astronauts uh, will be supplied by the uh, spacecraft, which will be launched by uh, the third partner, 
partner of the project, which is Notre Grumman. And Notre Grumman will be uh, supplying the astronauts and also uh, the energies, the uh, everything uh, the, which will be needed on board, uh, thanks to their genius ca senior uh, capsules. Uh, which have already been uh, supplying the International Space Station nowadays. They are fully autonomous capsules, so spacecraft, which can dock to the uh, Starlab Space Station and then uh, bring, bring with it uh, uh, food, water and, uh, and all the other resources together for sure with scientific experiments. So as I have, as I have said, there will be four astronauts which we talk to the Stalab space station and uh, we still don't know uh, specifically uh, about the the contract the experiments that will be made on board but one most, most important thing which differentiates uh, the Stalab space station so this project is the fact that the um, what Airbus and Voyager Space are uh, counting on uh, gover governmental uh, contracts. So, uh, differently from the pure commercial uh, space station, like uh, their competitors, which can be, for example, the Axiom Space Station, there will be space for commercial contracts, for sure, pri private commercial contracts, but the focus point will be uh, the contract with the uh, public agencies like ESA and NASA and all the other uh, agencies like the Canadian, the Japanese and so so like that. So uh, there will be the, the, uh, the most important contracts, the uh, biggest amount of money which will be brought into the project and uh, so scientific experiments and something like that. And and the focus is okay when we decommission the International Space Station in something like five to six years, uh, we will give you an alternative. This alternative is Starlab. Uh, one of the most important, one of another important thing is the modularity of uh, of the spacecraft of the station because uh, it can be interconnected with, uh, with other modules, which again can be launched in a single launch. Uh, again with the Starship but now let's talk about uh, let's give a look uh, at the space station itself so uh, we can just talk about the history of the International Space Station and all the or orbiting space station as we can see uh, on their website uh, everything started uh, on the Russian counterpart in uh, 1971 when the Salyut 1 was launched and for sure it was built by the Soviets and uh, now in 19 well then in uh, 1973 the Skylab was uh, put in space by the I would say the US counterpart so thanks to uh, America uh, we had the second uh, space station of the history and uh, again also in that times people were thinking about the reusability optimizing the resources indeed for people who don't know the Skylab was uh, taken from an intermediate stage of the Saturn V rocket which was uh, uh, widely used for uh, uh, launching uh, humans uh, to, towards the moon so uh, that that part of the design of the project of the materials everything was recycled and uh, adapted uh, to build the Skylab then in 1986 uh, the, the, again with the Russian we have the Mir space station which lasted for something like uh, 15 years and then uh, the, the project of the Mir, which means peace in Russia, in Russian language, uh, was adapted to, to be uh, yeah, conjuncted with the International Space Station, what was uh, the very beginning of the International Space Station, uh, which is a huge project that started in 1998, as I would say at the beginning it, uh, it Basically, it, it is a never-ending project with things, improvement, uh, constantly being done. Nowadays, we don't have uh, any module which is added, uh, added now because uh, it is going to be decommissioned. So, uh, astronauts uh, just keep on flying on it, uh, keep on attracting, uh, attracting docking, and uh, covering missions and making experiments. But we all know that this is basically a 30 year old project with the philosophy, with the design concept, which are typical of that years and a lot of, I would say, experimental flying objects. So uh, now, we, that, now we have a deeper know-how, a deeper understanding of, uh, of what we can do to better improve the things in orbit. Uh, a new project, new projects, uh, because they, we, 
the startup is not the only one we'll be launching in space so we now just come to nowadays uh, yeah we have 2023 now we are in 2024 and probably the next year we can we we have the possibility the chance to see startup be launched and uh, this is amazing this is amazing uh, under uh, i would say uh, different uh, points of view but before going on I would like to talk about the, I would say the competitors of the project as I was saying before we we just can we can uh, we can talk about competitors but that's not the right word because uh, as I was saying uh, Starlab aims to cover I would say a different part of the market that market is uh, the one of the governmental contracts indeed uh, um, uh, st uh, the Starlab, uh, Starlab project which which has Airbus space uh, and Voyager space and again uh, Northrop Grumman aims to take money from this kind of contract so we will see astronauts flying uh, and making experiments in orbit uh, and then again maybe in a more distant future we will see some commercial a purely commercial partnership we are uh, we already heard about Hilton which wants to build uh, a part which wants to occupy part of that module with uh, I would say um, uh, I would say VIP, VIP, VIP parts just to uh, to host people who who just want to fly in space for their pleasure but this is a very very distant project in the future the, the main goal nowadays and the main goals to i would say the the business plan of the project is taking money from a governmental contract and this is very important under different point of view one of them is the european point of view i mean indeed if you think about the competitors what's happening nowadays in space we have the international space station which is okay international with multiple contributions from uh, different agencies NASA, ESA, Ca uh, Canada, Japan and uh, basically everything apart from China and uh, there is uh, again Russia also in the project but then apart from the ISS we have the uh, Tiangong space station which is the Chinese counterpart and from some images and some videos from that uh, we have seen that uh, there is a very modern very uh, futuristic architecture and so China uh, seems to have uh, gained also the know-how in building the space station but uh, and one of the signs of that, one of the, I would say, causes of that is, is the fact that the Tiangong space station has been built very recently. So uh, the technology, the materials, the design philosophy is very modern, is very far from what co was conceived in 1998 for the International Space Station. Because maybe you are wondering why we are still uh, building something like uh, which uh, resembles very old uh, and has to be adapted to the International Space Station one of the answers is the fact that uh, when you have to I would say dialogue with the systems uh, with the uh, uh, objects which were built with standards of 30 years ago well you just have to adapt you just cannot think about bringing an experiment a technology a new part uh, I would say even a new module into the ISS and bring uh, completely new technology new standards which are basically incompatible with uh, what you are going to find there now, back again, talking about the international environment of the project. Well, this is very important, in, particularly, in particular under the European counterpart, because if you think about the commercial space station, also uh, the, the private ones, which will be built by Axiom, for example, and other companies, well, there is no European company which is going to build a space station like Starlab, like the International Space Station, like the Axiom or Tiangong One. Uh, all the European company in the space field uh, have very small funds and therefore very small projects. So uh, Airbus has a very strategic interest in uh, being part of the project uh, involving Europe into the project. Particularly, I have to mention two uh, countries of Europe, which are Italy and France, which will be particularly involved in the construction and the logistics of the, of the startup project. This is very important because you don't have to forget that uh, apart from the commercial astronaut uh, the, the astronauts we have uh, uh, we have been used to think about uh, they are all paid by the respective government for example uh, if, uh, if you think about uh, a country let's say Spain Spain has to 
to pay for uh, for allowing an astronaut from their country to be uh, transported and to be uh, to, to be allowed to fly into the international space station but if your country is not part of a union or uh, i would say uh, a group of countries we, which have the right to fly into an international uh, into a space station for example you don't basically have access to space and your country is just cut out from that uh, that project so this is very very important for europe also under the strategic point of view and by the way we are talking about uh, strategical partnership strategical uh, i would say environment i strongly invite you to go and see our latest video interview we uh, where we hosted we have a very special guest who is Benjamin Ogden, and uh, he is uh, the professor of uh, professor of strategic space studies. Uh, he has a huge and impressive career in the U.S. Army, and we talking about privatization, we talking about China, and uh, the strategic importance of space. And yes, we also talking about Biden and Trump and the uh, presidential election. So that's a very interesting video, quite long, but uh, I really, really appreciated this uh, this chat we have uh, with him. So very, very interesting. I strongly advise you to look at him. But now back again to the startup project, and uh, let's talk about. Uh, for example, the impact uh, the project can have. I'm just showing you just a little part of this project. And uh, this is very important also under the commercial point of view. And uh, also considering that uh, uh, some, uh, some experiment will be uh, made by uh, co private companies and uh, which will be, uh, again, bringing money into, into the system. And uh, this is very, very important also for uh, for the business plan development because uh, as we have seen now, now we are just going to, to think about a, a more distant future. Well, uh, the, the mission of the thing is, uh, okay, being uh, funded indirectly by uh, governmental and public contracts for science, for experiments, for things like that. But then when space would be, I would say, wi uh, more widely accepted by, by the companies and private companies not directly involved in the sector will be using space uh, to make research, to make uh, to develop, to make a research and development for their projects. Well, well, this is this will be a very interesting outpost uh, to make experiments, to make research, uh, and contrast also will come from that side. So this is, uh, I would say, the, the last thing, uh, the last accomplishment of uh, our startup. Now. I hope that you enjoyed the video, I hope you found it uh, interesting, so let me know in the comments uh, if I forgot to mention something, and uh, before I uh, uh, tell you goodbye, I invite you to visit our website at www.spaceinfo.club, where tons of content, particularly free content, you just have to, to join the club, which is 100% free. You can, you, we just need your email and you will be accessing the members area and all the magazine articles, the articles from the blog and the courses we, we just reserve for you. This is everything free and just you subscribing will greatly support us. So uh, just give a look. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.